and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers have the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh king of Egypt. Now therefore that the Lord thy God he is God the faithful God which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Remain standing. I want to read one verse. In verse 9, New Living says it like this. Understand, therefore, that the Lord your God is indeed God. He is the faithful God. Say faithful God. Who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations. And lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his commandments. Now, if this is true and you know it to be true, when I announce this subject, I want you to shout like this is your last time. It's on the screen. God is faithful. Come on, lean down your road. Say he's faithful. Come on, look at somebody else. Tell him he's been faithful to me. Come on, tell him he's been faithful. He's been, come on, throw your head back, open your mouth, and say he's the faithful God. God is faithful. Look down your whole row and say, yes, he is. You may have your seats. I want to talk this morning about the faithful God. God is faithful. Have I got a witness here? Let me say this again. God is faithful. Uh -uh, here's your shout. Even when I'm unfaithful. Don't look at me like you have done everything right. I said even when I was unfaithful, God still was faithful. Here's your place to shout and still woke me up this morning. Every morning, new mercies. I see because God is faithful. Uh, uh, tell her he, he was faithful. Even when I didn't even know his name. <laughs> Tell somebody I didn't even know him yet. But he still was faithful. Listen, I, I want to lay this backdrop so you can understand and see um, this pericope, this novella, this saga, this, um, this story about the children of Israel. Contextually, Israel is about to enter the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. After 40 years of wandering in the wilderness while a rebellious generation die off. And before they are allowed to enter the land, Moses, he delivers a series of sermons to the people of God. These discourses, little Kenny, were given to the generations of Israelites that were born during the wilderness who had either been very young or not even born yet when the law was first given to Israel. This generation, watch this Jason, needed to know that God was with them just as he had promised to be with their fathers. It's critical to see this because they were about to face the fight of their lives and they needed divine assurance that they could depend on God. This particular passage this morning identifies Israel that their God is a faithful God. <laughs> they can rest in him. They can trust his word. They can believe his promises. They can depend on his power. He will see them through whatever may come their way. 
And my brothers and sisters from all ages today, we need this same kind of reminder this morning that we can trust in our God through whatever comes our way. Come on, y'all. So then there are some reasons in this text this morning that demonstrates the truth that our God is the faithful God. Let's first look at on the screen God's faithful passion. Say that with me. Faithful passion. God's faithful passion to his people. Um, first of all, there's a reality of God's passion. God's love is everlasting say that everlasting his passion his love is everlasting look at Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3 new living says this long ago the Lord said to Israel I have loved you my people with an everlasting love with unfailing love I have drawn you to myself and some of you ought to say amen his faithful Passion. And not only is God's love is everlasting, then his love is expensive. Say expensive. Yeah. Romans 5, 8, King James says this. But God commanded his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It was expensive. He gave his entire life that we may have eternal life. So not only is God's love is everlasting and expensive, his love is extensive. John 3.16 says it like this on the screen. He says, for God so loved the world. Say extensive, say extensive. That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And the people of God says amen. amen. So there is a reality of his passion. And then there is a reaction of his passion. The text says, it's on the screen. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee. The reaction. Now, this word chosen means, it's on the screen, read it with me, to elect, say it, or decide for. One more time. To elect or decide for. It means, watch this, to choose. God chooses and he elects. Out of all the people on the face of the earth in that day, God chose the tiny nation of Israel to be the focus of his love, mercy, and his grace. Now listen, get this. If you are saved this morning, it's because he has chosen you too. God didn't shout. Look at Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. Let me prove it to you on the screen. According as he have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. And ten people ought to shout hallelujah. Tell somebody he chose me. Now, this could be a strong a debate about uh, predestination and, and election, but I won't delve into that today. But tell somebody one more time, I'm chosen. Now, you didn't choose him, but he chose you. Yeah, that's a hot place to shout. Yeah, he chose you even though he knew you were going to mess up. He chose you even he knew that you were going to be a crook, a backslider. He chose you when he knew you would turn out to be a liar. But he had a plan to redeem you because he chose you before the foundation of the world. Even before I knew his name, he chose me. And the shout is, he knew that I would backslide. And some of you this morning, you, you ought to take a moment and shout right now that he chose you with your crazy self. Some of you sitting there like you done got yourself here, but you ought to thank God he looked beyond your faults. And he saw your need. And not only did he see your need, but he met your need. Can you high five your neighbor? Say, neighbor, you better watch how you look at me because God chose me. And not only did he choose me, he's using me. Right now, God chose you before the foundation of the world. 
watch this, watch this. But we still must look to Jesus by faith before we can be saved. So we see the reality. Then we see the reaction for God's passion. And then there's the reasons for God's passions. We see the reality of his passions. We see the reaction. But there are some reasons for his passion. Reasons. Reasons. Why did God choose Israel? Well, in, in verse 7, God didn't choose them because of their numerical superiority. He didn't choose them because there were so many of them. Matter of fact, he says in the scripture that they were the fewest of all the people. In other words, God didn't choose them because of inequality they possessed within themselves. God tells them in verse 8, just why he chose them. And redeemed them. He did it, watch this, because of his will. Uh -huh. The text says in verse 8, because the Lord loved you. Mm, can I preach right here? Uh -uh, I, I, I know God didn't choose me to be a bishop because I got myself together. I know he didn't choose me to become a bishop because our church is so big. I know he didn't choose me to be a bishop because I can preach so well. He chose me to become who I am just because he loved me. Uh, Y'all still ain't get it. He chose them and saved them and blessed them and stood by them. Here it is because he wanted to. Y'all not getting this here. Here's the shout. I, 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 I blessed you so good. Y'all ready? Just because I wanted to. Uh, I healed you just because I wanted to. Uh, I, I overflowed your household not because you got yourself together just because I wanted to it's because of his will can I go deeper he also did it not only because of his will but because of his word I'm in the text the Lord tells them another reason in verse 8 for his grace towards them had to do with his promises to their fathers uh, he blessed them because of his will, because he wanted to. He loved them, but, but, but not only because he loved them, it's because, watch this, you're going to see it, it's going to bless you. It's because of his will, not because of his will only, but because of his, what I say? What I say? Because of his word, because God sticks to his, his, his word. Watch this. He tells them God made some promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob have I got a witness here and on the basis of those promises God kept his word watch this because of another let me pause parenthetically to put in this passage in the period from the pulpit if y'all can shout we almost there won't God keep his word can somebody testify God shows us something and you possess it right now look down your road just three people and tell them God keep his word God keep his word God keeps his the reason the reason God keeps his word in the text watch this it's because he made promises to another Oh, watch this. Watch this. Uh, 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 uh. God didn't save you because he saw something good in you. Here it is. Uh, because there's nothing good in any of us. Y'all not saying nothing. Uh, uh, God didn't save you because you kept the commandments so closely. He didn't save you because you're so educated. He didn't save you because of what college you went through. He didn't save you because we're so good because there's none good in this place right now. Let me, let, let me prove it. Let me prove it. Let me prove it. I'll see how y'all looking at me. Look at Romans 3.10. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. There is none that understandeth there is none that seeketh at the God. 
they are all gone out of the way they are together become unprofitable there is none that do it good no not one well he talking to the Romans you know better than them you can be as wicked y'all don't want to talk to me you can be just as greasy and slimy as those are in the text in fact the bible is for our learning and the word is not for those that are not here the word is for those that are no not one no not one look at your neighbor say no look at him real good and please say no not you or me no not one there's none good and your righteousness is as filthy rags and the same text the same chapter i'm gonna move down to verse 23 it says it on the screen for all Tell somebody that includes me have sin and come short of the glory of God. Get on and say testify. Tell them I come short every day. I may not have smoked nothing, but I lied in my mind. Every day I fall short of the glory of God. But thanks be to God, he still loves me and chose me. Here's your place to shout. Brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light, translated me into his dear son. And now I'm saved by grace through faith. Not a gift, not a works, I mean, but it's a gift of God that I can never brag. Because it was nobody but the Lord. Look at somebody say, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Get on your feet and jump three times and say, nobody, 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 nobody. Nobody, 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 no. Nobody. Be seated. Be seated. God. Didn't save you. Because he saw and acts that you will be to his kingdom after all beloved the bible says we were dead when he came to us to save us ephesians 2 says that we were dead in sins and trespasses in times past we walked according to the course of this world according to the power of the flesh in the air we were children of disobedience even the nature of us was untoward god but god who is rich in mercy wherewith he loved us with this great love we were dead we had no stimuli we didn't even have the faith to come to him because we were dead he even gave us the faith to believe in him because when we came we were dead we couldn't react dead in sins and trespasses God didn't save you based on anything you did, you said, you prayed, or you possessed. God saved you. Here's the shout. Here's the shout. I'm in the text because of another. You ain't get it. He saved the children of Israel because he had to keep his word because of the fathers. He saved us, not because of us, watch this, because, here it is, of another. God saved you 
Because one Friday on a hill called Calvary, he died, didn't he die? But bright early Sunday morning, he stepped out on resurrection ground and declared, I got all power. He saved you because of another. Jesus, the son of the living God. Jesus, the devil shaker. Jesus, the rock in a weary land. Jesus, the bright and morning star. Open your mouth and say, he saved me. So, number one, be seated. We're just talking. Number one, God's faithful passion. Am I doing all right? Uh, for his people. And then we see in the text, Jason, God's on the screen, faithful performance. His faithful passion. And we see his faithful. I'm going to give it to you, Kenny. I promise you. Faithful performance. Can I just pause right here? And add this if I can. God has performed so much in your life. Some of y'all ain't shouting. Uh -uh. Sometimes in order to get any courage for your today. You got to look at his past performance portfolio. David said, and the wicked and my foes, when they came upon me, they stumbled and fell. Somebody can testify that God has performed so much. I got so much to thank God for. Now, some of you may not have anything to thank God for, but you ought to thank God for what you don't have. Cancer, I ain't got it. Sugar diabetes, I ain't got it. Ain't y'all think it should have been me? You want to open your mouth and show I ain't got it. Still don't want to shout. Grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you ain't got nothing to thank God for, thank God for what you don't have. Shout hallelujah. I ain't got a crime on my list. Shout hallelujah. Throw your head back and say, neighbor, every time I think about what he saved me from, I got to open my mouth. I got to shout. Come on, somebody shout glory. Somebody. Woo. I feel the anointing. I got so much to thank my God for. Throw your head back from your belly and give God praise. God has performed, be seated, so much in my life. His faithful performance for his people. Watch this. You have to see this because Todd. He delivers them. Watch this. I'm talking about the children of Israel. His faithful performance. Listen. It's right in the text. In verse 8, God reminds them that he brought them on the screen out with a mighty hand. I'm in the text. Um, them out of the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Uh, are y'all seeing this here? Uh, watch this. He didn't just love them and call them his people, but he actually purchased them unto himself. Uh, watch this. You got to know the story of the children of Israel um, being in bondage in Egypt under the hand of Pharaoh. God purchased Israel when the Passover lamb was slaughtered and its blood placed on the doors of the houses. 
you have to see this. The children of Israel were in bondage and captivity um, under Pharaoh. And, and, and God now was going stricken or come after, watch this here, the um, city or the, 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 the uh, uh, region of, of Egypt. And he was going to kill every firstborn. So God tells Moses and Aaron to tell the people to slaughter a lamb and take the blood and, and smear it on both sides and on the seal of your doorposts. So when the deaf angel come to um, take out every firstborn, they will see the blood or the angel will see the blood and pass over. Yeah, I'm not saying nothing. Hi, the Bible talks about their Passover banquet when they will eat the lamb and um, unleavened bread and, and bitter herbs. Now today, we take communion. We, we, we eat the bread as a symbol as Jesus' body and, and we drink the wine as a symbol of the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Here's my place to shout. What can wash? <laughs> Oh my God, my sins away. What can y'all not saying over here? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Can I help somebody? You got to make sure the blood is in a place where somebody can see it. Yeah, huh? Oh, y'all not saying over here. The reason why you ain't dead and the reason why you ain't caught up because when it came to you, it had to pass over you because it's on the blood all over you. Can you grab somebody say, plead the blood, plead the blood, plead the blood. When you go home today, I dare you, plead the blood against everything that's in your house. Plead the blood against over your children. Plead the blood over your finances. Y'all not saying that. Grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, it was nothing but the blood. Save me. Oh God, I want to preach here. In Exodus 12, they were purchased with the blood of an innocent substitute God bought them. Then through a series of miracles, God delivered them from their captivity and set them people free. I come to tell you as a modern day Moses, I'm going to lift up my right hand of a bishopric of signature and say, let my people go. Y'all not saying nothing here. Every devil, let him go. Every stronghold, let him go. Loose him and let him go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, let him go. Every demon, every wish, let him go. The poverty, let him go. The low self-esteem, let it go. The depression, let him go. Open your mouth and shout, I'm free, I'm free. Tell somebody, this is my coming out morning. This is my coming out morning. I'm getting out of here. And so that's just what he did for us. He redeemed us to himself through the blood of Jesus Christ. Not only did he redeem us, but he has delivered us from the bondage of our sins. So in his faithful performance, he delivers them. Watch this. And then he develops them. Say that, develops them. In verse 6, God calls Israel a holy people and special people. I'm still in Deuteronomy chapter 7. If you look at it, verse 6, he says they are holy and they're special. Now the word holy, need I know you love teaching. It carries the idea of being a saint. Yeah. Uh, I am, look at your neighbor say, I am a saint. Mm -hmm. Now you're not holy because you're so good. You're holy because you're married to a holy God. Um, you carry his last name. God, God, you carry. God is holy. He says, I, my name is holy. Holy. It carries the idea of a saint. Tell somebody one more time. I know you don't like it, but I am a saint. Yeah. I no longer call myself a sinner saved by grace. I am a saint of the most high God because he sanctified me. Y'all not saying nothing here. He set me apart and he ordained me to be who I am today. 
Can you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you are set apart by God. Um, help me preach this and I'm out of here. It's the image, watch this, of something that is set apart for God's singular use. Tell somebody one more time with conviction and preach to them. Tell them, I am a saint. Come on, preach to them like you said, I am a saint. Come on, preach to them, I am a saint of God. So, then the word special, let me get this, the word special now, it carries the idea of treasure. Mm. Um, so then God is telling Israel that while they were small in number and had no real qualities about them, God loved them, saved them, and set them free and set them apart as his treasure. Uh, oh, y'all not saying nothing. My brothers and sisters, this, this is just a reminder of how the Lord works in our lives. I came to Jesus just as I was, weary, wounded, and sad. But I found in him a resting place. Tell somebody, and he has made me glad. I feel like preaching, but y'all not helping me here. So, so number one, number one, I'm almost there. God's faithful passion for his people. Number two, God's faithful performance for his people. And then lastly, unless I hold you too long, it's on the screen, God's faithful promises. His, his faithful passion, his faithful performance, and I got the clothes here. His faithful promises. I'm standing on the promises of God. I got a close, but God is faithful because of his name alone. Oh, bless his name. Let me hear that E flat. In verse 9, God is called God. Yeah, the Lord that God. Just let me hear it. And the faithful God. He is called, here it is, God. Now, this word identifies him as the one who is over all. Now, the name Lord is the covenant name of God. It identifies him as the eternal self-existent one. It's the most common name for him in the Bible, occurring over 5,200 times in the Old Testament. And since it's his covenant name, it speaks of him as one who keeps faith with his people. In other words, he is the one who will do whatever he says he's going to do. And he promised that he will keep them. Yeah, I'm not saying nothing here. He is their God. Uh, now the pronoun thy reminds them of their relationship to this covenant keeping God. He is their God and he will keep his promises to them. Yeah. Oh God I'm in my seat now. But the God we serve, let me hear it, is a faithful God. Have I got one witness here? Let me hear the E flat. And I believe that uh, his faithfulness is unlimited. Yeah, his faithfulness is unfailing. His faithfulness is a glimpse into his character. Do I have a witness that can testify that God is faithful? His faithfulness is abounding and his faithfulness is to help his people. Grab somebody and tell your neighbor, neighbor, I thank God he is faithful. He's faithful to those he saves. He's faithful in forgiveness of sin. Have I got one witness here? Tell somebody, say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but God will forgive of sins. For if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Can I preach it the way I feel it? He is called the faithful God. He's a 
reports and he confirms he established and he delivers and because God is who he is we can count on him in every situation we may face in life grab somebody by the hand and tell them neighbor your word is your God is faithful shout hallelujah the reason why you can shout because every time you think about how good God's been you remember how you were low down but God stayed faithful to you look at somebody say neighbor I got a word for you you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me he picked me up turned me around place my feet on higher ground anybody here can testify today can't nobody do me like Jesus can't nobody do me like the Lord open your mouth give God a praise he's worthy shout hallelujah he is called the faithful God my brothers and sisters friends will fail but God is faithful family will fail but God is faithful funds will fail but God is faithful feelings will fail but God is faithful faith will fail but God is faithful he will save you if you come to Jesus shout hallelujah stand on your feet and get in these aisles and tell your neighbor say neighbor when I think of the goodness of the Lord my soul cries out hallelujah shout glory to God I feel my help coming shout hallelujah shout glory to God I see the lightning flashing I had sin dazzle breaking trying to conquer my soul but I heard the voice of Jesus bidding me to fight on he promised never to leave me alone seek somebody one more time tell them neighbor tell them neighbor tell them neighbor I got a word for you tell them neighbor when you look like you're about to lose look unto Jesus who's the author and finisher of your faith shout hallelujah throw your head back open your mouth and give God a shout come on praise him like you got your breakthrough shout like he's faithful shout like you got it come on and shout He kept me, he kept me, he kept me, he kept me, shout glory, shout glory, can I holler one time, say neighbor, if you holler with me, I'll holler with you. Say, if you holler with me, I'll holler with you. Yeah! 